Hi everyone, this is Mandy Borsico with a quick demo on constructive anatomy of the head. These are the materials I'm going to be using. Nitrum B, HB, a couple of stumps, a kneaded eraser and Canson Metant flannel grey. I'm going to be doing two drawings of a three-quarter view, one of the planal skull on the left and one of the planal head on the right, so I'm going to measure and make them more or less the same size, measuring top, bottom, left and right, and then the first thing to do is to block in the shapes. Now I'm going to block in both of them so that I have the same scale. From now on I'm going to focus on one drawing only, and I'll draw on the left to start off with, and that's going to be the skull. I've marked in the brow ridge, but I want to make sure it's in the right place, so I'm going to measure thirds and make sure that the bottom of my nose is about halfway from the chin to the brow and then it's the same again to about the hairline which is where the front plane of the skull turns into the top plane. And I might as well put in those placements on the drawing on the right and then I can put my knitting needle away. I start with the brow ridge and then put the high point of the cheekbone and then the mandible, the lower part of the skull that is the jaw. And I continue to work my way around the drawing, separating out the front plane from the side plane and the front plane from the top plane. Then I put a center line into my front plane to line up left and right of the features and of the zygomatic arch of the cheekbone and also of the mandible. Going back to the brow ridge, we can put in the glabella, that is the little separation between the eyebrows and then the nasal cavity and the side wall of the nose. Then we put in the teeth line, or what separates out the maxilla, the top part of the jaw, from the mandible, the lower part of the jaw, and then the eye sockets, as well as the nasal cavity. The next thing to do is to darken inside the cavities to make those areas look like they're recessed or like holes, which in fact they are. Another part that is recessed is the front part of the zygomatic arch. Zygomatic arch refers to the bone under the eye sockets, and that bone turns around the corner and goes around to just above our ear. But in the front, under the eye sockets, that's actually quite concave, and that gives the appearance of being flat in the front. The area I'm working in right now is a gap, and it's between the teeth line and the back of the jaw. As I progress with this drawing, I'm always refining my shapes. And as you can see, I'm making the back of the skull a little bit bigger. That's the occipital part, which on a lot of people is quite rounded, but on some people, the back of the skull there is quite flat. And then around the temple area, that is the side of our eye socket. And it protrudes quite a bit, whereas the temple behind it is quite flat. We want to line up the bottom of the cheekbones with the nasal spine. That is the little spine at the bottom of the nasal cavity. And while drawing the shapes and refining the internal shapes, I'm always aware of that center line and lining up left and right and making sure that things look symmetrical in perspective. As we go down to the bottom of the mandible, the bottom of the jaw has a little ridge that protrudes a bit. You can feel that on your own chin. And also as you go around the jaw, all the way around to the angle of the jaw, that ridge protrudes quite a bit. Now when most of the elements are in, it's time to clean up the drawing and refine our shapes. Make sure that it looks right. So the first thing to do would be to remove any of our constructive drawing lines that we don't need or that we need to actually lighten. And then we need to do some turning of the form to show that we have a top plane or a front plane that's receiving light. And then we have side planes that are not receiving light. And we have cavities that are much darker than other things. The nasal cavity, for instance, it's quite dark. And the side plane of the nose is dark by virtue of being on the side and not receiving that much light, as opposed to the top plane, which is upward facing and does receive light. So inside of the eye socket, from the glabella towards the eye socket, which is a cavity, that's also a downward facing plane or an inward facing plane. So we have much less light in there. And, and of course, in the cavity itself, uh, there's no light in um, the drawing of a skull. 
It's always a good idea to work on the equivalent forms left and right rather than draw everything on the left side, then everything on the right side. If you're working in eye sockets, work on one, then work on the other one and make sure that things line up nicely. I've said this before, but some things are worth repeating. It's never too late to make corrections. So if you find that your shapes are somewhat wrong, then correct them. Draw in the line that you think is correct and then erase out the wrong line. This drawing is in a stage where some things are more completed and other things are at an earlier stage, so it's worth getting everything to the same stage and tidying up as we go. As I work on the contour, on the outside of the cheekbone, the bottom of that cheekbone, I want to make sure that it lines up with the bottom of the cheekbone over on the right. And I also want to make sure that it looks like a bit of a depression. It can't be as dark as a cavity, so maybe it's time to go in and make those cavities a little bit darker and reinforce some of our three-dimensional concept in this drawing. As with the eye cavities, also with the cheekbones, I've drawn on the left. Now I want to draw the equivalent cheekbone over on the right and make sure that everything lines up and they look like they're a match. As I work down into the teeth line, I want to make sure I've got my center line in and line up my teeth, make sure everything looks like a bit of an ellipse down there in the teeth line. And then we've got the side plane of the maxilla. The maxilla is the top part of our mouth or muzzle or jaw. That is everything that encompasses and includes the top teeth, whereas the mandible is a lower part. It's the lower part of the jaw that actually is attached to the rest of our skull with a hinge joint. So the mandible is the top, the maxilla is the bottom. As I continue to this drawing, I'm working on the three-dimensional aspect. Just a little bit of turning to show that we're going from the front plane to the side plane and also there's a bit of a depression and gap between the zygomatic arch and the mandible and the maxilla. And now I'm refining and erasing the lines that we don't need and making sure that we've got the right angles for brow ridge and also for separating out the front plane of the head, the top part of the skull and the side plane and also the top plane from the side plane. So that side plane is quite flat and we want to just shade it in to make sure it looks like it's different, it's separated from the front or the top, and that it's quite flat. So the rest of the jaw is also on the side plane. It's probably worth putting some tone in there to push it into the side. Speaking of pushing, we can just make things a little bit quieter by smoothing out some of those very strong lines. So having smoothed out or smudged those original hatching lines, let's go back and reinforce some of our edges. One of the edges that we want to look at is the edge that separates different forms. For example, the zygomatic arch is in front of the temple bone. And then we want to look at the terminator line. That's where the front plane changes to the side plane. So the major change of plane is front plane to side plane. Front plane to top plane we're not that concerned about but right now we're working and wanting to turn the form to make it very obvious that the front plane is changing and it's no longer facing the front it's now going off to the side in the eye socket we want to get the cavity area quite nice and dark so it looks cavernous it looks like a hole but then we want to get the eye socket dark as well um, same with the nose we want the nose cavity to be nice and dark to make it look like it's like a cave it's cavernous but the side plane of the nose it gets a little bit of tone to show that it's facing the right side some of those lines that we want to reinforce are the separations of form so the separation of the nasal bone from the rest of the skull the separation of the zygomatic arch from the parietal bone and the separation of the bottom of the zygomatic arch from the bottom of the jaw. Now tidy up as you go. I'm using a chamois, a chamois, to get things a little bit lighter. We can actually use an eraser to lighten things up. We want to separate out the contour, the skull, from the background. And we can use a lighter 
stick, which is in this case the HB, and get the things which are a bit further away from our viewpoint, say the outer contour on the left and the top part of the skull a little bit lighter than the things which are actually closer to us. And that helps with the illusion of aerial perspective. The things that are closer to us are more reinforced, they're darker, they're stronger contrast, and the things a little bit further away, they're lighter, they're a bit fuzzier, they're less sharp. So at the end of this drawing, as with the end of other drawings, just tidy up, get rid of the lines that you don't need, any of those construct lines, and get things to look a tiny little bit neater, and you'll have a good record of your constructive skull anatomy drawing. Now let's move on to the drawing on the right, the planes of the head. And again, we're going to start with the outer contour. And I've started with the brow ridge and I work my way up around the cranium. This part of the planes of the head, the drawing on the right, is going to be really similar to the drawing over on the left because that part of the skull is covered with an aponeurosis, which is a very thin layer of fascia. And where there are muscles, like on the temple, the temporalis, or on the front, on the forehead, the frontalis, those muscles are really thin and flat. So basically, we can see the shape of the head, the shape of the skull. And the first thing we want to do, just like with the drawing of the skull, is to separate out the front plane from the side plane and the top plane. Then the next major separation will be the brow ridge. After putting the brow ridge in, we want that center line, the center line of the facial features. That's the line up left and right in a logical sequence. In the planal head, we will this time have a whole nose, we'll have eyeballs inside the eye sockets, and we'll have lips on top of the maxilla and the mandible, and then we'll have the planes that cover the muscles on top of our cheekbones and jaw. Now you can see that I keep referring back to the original drawing on the left, because I want to line up where the mouth is going to be on top of that same skull. All of my feature lines are lined up perpendicularly to that center line. So the brow line, the eye line, the top of the eyes, the bottom of the eyes, the bottom of the nose, the top of the lips, the lip line itself, the bottom of the lip and the chin line. We should be quite structured about where we place our features. And then we can put a light tone into the whole of the side plane to separate it from the front plane. At this point, we don't want any details in that side plane. And then we can take a sponge and smooth things out a bit in that side plane. As always, we want to tidy up as we go and get more accurate with our shapes. So starting with the forehead and the whole of the top plane, let's get that looking a little bit more structured. And also the brow ridge make it look like a little bit of a roof. Go into the glabella. The glabella is that little section in between the two eyebrow or in between the brow ridge, in between the eyes. And taking an eraser, we can tidy things up because that top brow ridge needs to look like it's an upward facing plane. So it needs to be light. Working our way down from the glabella is of course the nose. The planal head has got a nose, whereas the skull only had the nasal bone and then a cavity below that. In this instance, we want to draw the whole of the top plane of the nose, the front plane, that tiny little plane that faces the front, and the side plane. So we can put a little bit of light tone in the side plane to indicate that that is the side and separate it from the front plane. And then let's go back into the eye cavity under the brow ridge before we get to our eyeballs, which are located inside the eye cavity. And this is a very stylized, very general view of what the eyeballs would look like inside of that hollow under the brow ridge. And I've used a paper stump to smooth things out inside of that downward facing plane to make it look like it's recessed. When I work in the cheekbone, I want to make sure that my left and my right always line up. So when I draw the left, I'll draw the right at the same time and make sure that any points that protrude or any points that are depressed, they line up in good perspective. 
And going into the muzzle area, that is the mouth area, anything below the nose and above the chin, we want to first get our center line in. And that center line actually is quite convex so that our lips don't look like they're too recessed. And then under the lips, there's a little depression before we get to the upward facing plane of the top part of the chin. And of course, the bottom part of the chin is a downward facing plane. At this stage of the drawing, we just want to get those different planes in. We've gone from the major planes, the front, the side, and the top plane, to medium sized planes, and now to smaller planes. And of course, we're putting some tone in, but we will be adjusting those tones to show the different directions that those planes face. On the side plane of the head is the ear. So first of all, we want a good placement, and the placement would be the top of the ear lines up with either the eye line or the brow line, depending on different people. The bottom of the ear would probably align with the bottom of the nose. So having got a little shape in for that ear, we now want to tidy up our drawing. We want that front facing plane and the top planes to be quite light. And of course, the last thing that we need to add in will be a neck. And the neck has some shadow being cast from the head, so we'll get that in. So far, we've got the major shape. We've got the front plane and the side planes and the top planes, the major planes, the medium planes, and the minor planes. And now we've got all the placements in. So we just want to go back and refine our drawing and make sure that we're emphasizing those changes in planes which are closest to us and de-emphasizing those contours which are further away from our eye as a viewer. As always, we're tidying up, we're refining, we're getting our drawing a little bit more accurate, a little bit more believable, and getting much more minor things like, say, the filtrum in. I'm using a combination of the eraser and paper stump and the lighter nitrum charcoal, the HB, to make a drawing that is more refined and more believable and more adherent to rules of aerial perspective and looks like a good drawing of constructive anatomy of the head. Constructive anatomy is basically a very structured approach to drawing for us to learn the structure of a form, in this case of the head and of the features. And we can consider this to be a kind of diagram version of a head. We wouldn't normally start any kind of portrait in this manner, but if we know the structure, that is good news because pretty much everyone's head has the same structure. All we need then to look for when we're drawing a real portrait is the individual proportions. We don't need to worry about structure or what it is that we're seeing. We understand that we have a brow ridge that faces up, we have a forehead, we have a depression for the eye sockets, we have the front plane of the nose, we have the bottom plane, we have shadow coming off of the nose typically if we have light coming from the top, and this will help to inform what we see when we're looking at a model in real life. And this knowledge will help to take our portraits to the next level. Thanks for watching. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more demos like this. This is Mandy Borsko, and I'll see you next time.